Mr. Mayor, good morning. Good morning to everyone on the call. Mayor, within the last few minutes, uh, several members of the New York congressional delegation, including Congressman Nadler, have called on the governor to resign. You have not used that word this week. Are you prepared to do so this morning? And and if so, doesn't that deprive the governor of due process under the law? Uh, no, Andrew. The governor has been depriving the people of the truth. The governor and his team have been trying to cover up the truth. I mean, we've gotten report after report of purposeful efforts to cover up the facts that the public deserves. We saw it with the nursing homes. We saw it with the Tappan Zee Bridge. We're now seeing it with horrendous efforts by staffers to silence women who are trying to speak their truth. And do you think for a moment they were just making that up? I suspect they got an instruction to do so. So look, unfortunately what we're seeing here is a pattern of cover-up and a pattern of lies. It is unacceptable. The governor must resign. He can no longer do the job. Go ahead, Andrew. Mayor, on the subject of vaccines, uh, based on the president's uh, instruction from last night that all American adults be eligible by May 1st, which seems to move the timeline up. You'll recall I asked about this earlier in the week. How do you make that happen in terms of supply versus eligibility? And could it even happen before May 1st? Look, when you asked, I think it was you, Andrew, asked the question, uh, what our health care team and I responded was we thought that open eligibility would be May or June. So it's really, thankfully, not that different. It's, uh, I think May 1st is a great a time to open it up. I think the president's right. Uh, it will make things on one level simpler because everyone will know they're eligible. Uh, and, of course, the state was holding us back from being able to vaccinate anyone at any site. Uh, that's been overcome now, thank God, but another example of why we need local control. But the bottom line here is if we have the supply, we keep moving forward. And if on May 1st we're able to vaccinate everyone, we'll make it work. We're ready to do that right now, but we need the supply. We cannot reach our potential if we don't get a hell of a lot more supply. Again, every week we're short about 150,000 to 200,000 doses. We need that addressed we need the state to give us our fair share. We need the federal government and the manufacturers to speed the distribution. Uh, and then we can absolutely get the job done. The next is James Ford from PIX11. Hey, good morning. Happy Friday. Happy Friday, James. How are you? Uh, not bad. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. And uh, hello to everyone on the call. Uh, you had called the governor's suspension of the quarantine order a possible April Fool's joke, if I got that right, that could be harmful to New York City residents and needs to be reconsidered. Will you just elaborate uh, on why it could be harmful to the residents of the city and how you want it to be reconsidered? Or do you actually want it to be fully reversed, even though it seems like a done deal? Uh, I don't think anything in Albany is a done deal right now. I think a lot of things are changing rapidly in Albany, and anything could be reversed that was done wrong. I'm going to turn to Dr. Varma and Dr. Choksi. I mean, we were all surprised, in fact, shocked when we heard this. Uh, it makes no sense to relax such a fundamental standard when we're still fighting this war and we got the variants on top of that. So let me have the doctors do the talking. Dr. Varma. Sure. Thank you very much for the question. You know, we feel really strongly that, you know, we need every weapon on our side to fight back against the coronavirus. As we keep reporting, uh, the virus is using evolution on its side to develop new variants, new ways to be more infectious. So we need all of the tools that we have available to us. And one of the tools that we know works is testing and tracing. And the reason these quarantine rules are beneficial to us is that they serve as a really critical reminder to people who are traveling to other places around the country, around the world, that they need to be tested before they get on a plane, they need to be tested after they get, get off that plane and, and are at home, and they need to stay isolated until they're confirmed that they haven't acquired COVID during that time. Uh, throughout this epidemic, we've seen that travel-associated cases have represented anywhere from five to 10% of all of the cases that we see here in New York City. That may not seem like a lot, but as we know with this disease, uh, even one case can lead to an outbreak and spread. So we need really everything on our side at this point um, as we continue in this sort of tense fight that we have right now with the virus. 
Thank you, Dr. Choksi. Uh, yes, sir, thank you. Uh, I will just add briefly that um, the reason that it's particularly important, uh, you know, to maintain travel quarantine, we just have to look uh, around the world and around the country to see um, that cases, you know, do um, continue to be a, a problem um, in other jurisdictions as well. Um, you know, there are major uh, COVID-19 outbreaks occurring in parts of Europe, uh, in parts of South America, um, and uh, there are, uh, you know, greater proportions of certain variants seen uh, in other parts of the United States as well as around the world as well. So this has been a critical tool in our fight, um, as Dr. Varma has mentioned, and now is just the time for us to be recommitting and redoubling our efforts when um, the, the idea that we could turn the corner on the pandemic is finally in our sight. Amen. Go ahead, James. 